This is Christine, Agent Van Jeffrey, and you're watching Behind the Scanner. Your access level has recently increased. Excellent. <laughs> Incoming message. Probably my end. I've, I've secluded myself so that there aren't random children walking in and asking when dinner is. So. <laughs> I hope I'm not taking you away from dinner. Nah. No. Nah. No. No. Right. No. It's all good. It's Taco Tuesday. So yeah, at least Taco they should know. Yes. Perfect. Although, is it, it's not really Tuesday. Well, it's Tuesday there. <laughs> it's Tuesday here. No, yep. Tuesday it's here. very much Tuesday here. Up, so. <laughs> yeah, you're up a bit late tonight. Yeah, well, this is kind of par for the course. Par for the course. <laughs> um, all right, I, I do have to do an intro real quick because otherwise it'll be awkward when, like, when I go okay. to do it. Thanks for everybody watching. I'm Red Solo Cup, and I have with me Agent Van Jeffries, who's joining us from the Shire, the land of Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> New Zealand. Welcome. Thanks. You definitely went with the the standard. <laughs> well, there was there was that, or there was the sheep joke, or you know, I, I could have gone a, a million different ways. To be honest with you, I'll go with Lord of the Rings. Okay, no, all right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to point out though, you you don't seem to have the stereotypical uh, New Zealander accent. I'm I'm not able to peg where you're from. Um, no, originally I'm from Denver, Colorado. The states well, that... um yeah so um it's a bit of a i would say a muddled accent probably at this point um depends on what words i say and who i'm talking to uh, but um yeah i've been here 13 years now almost almost 14 so yeah we definitely pick a few things up but uh not readily audible um to most americans i think so so how did you go from colorado to new zealand uh, well, I took a bit of a circuitous route. I went to um, from Denver to New Zealand for a year and um, on a contract job and then went back to Oklahoma for several years and had three kids and then uh, my husband took a job and we've been here ever since. So, yeah, quite a long time. Usually how it works out. It's either because of work yeah. or because of a loved one. And so in this case, it's both, right? I guess, so. Yep, yep, no, we wanted a, um, it was a good place to go. I was, we were both working full time and um, had a, a third child on the way. And this was a, a place we knew we liked in a, a way that um, I could be at home. So awesome. that's what we went yeah. with. Someday I'll get down there. I need to, uh, <laughs> it's, it's on my bucket list. I have friends that live down there and, I, it, it just seems beautiful from all the pictures. Everybody that I know that's from down there is just always so nice and welcoming. And plus you guys are home of flight of the Concords, which is like my favorite. Well, maybe not the favorite band, but one of my favorite bands, <laughs> I love the television show on HBO. I still watch it. Um, yeah, so yeah, very popular here. I got I got to get down there. I got to get down there. Um, it's well, definitely no, a great place to live. See, like, yeah. You have everything you have like, beaches and then you have jungles and then you have like snow and everything in between in like an hour drive which is pretty yeah, pretty much everything volcanoes and geothermal and um yeah we've got our our southern alps <laughs> it's with Gollum and um yeah so there really is a little bit of everything that's cool unfortunately that also comes with some earthquakes um, it does it does we are we are right along a plate boundary and so um Hence the geothermal activity and the volcanoes and the quakes. But yeah. How are things in Christchurch these days? Um, they are rebuilding beautifully. Um, we just did a mission day down there this last weekend, and um, it was yeah, it was really good. It's um, I think it it, it parallels um, ingress quite well. It was a, a way for people to get out and about and submit portals um, after the quake. And a lot of them were on um, buildings that um, are now gone. And so there's a lot of portal deletions that need to 
happen and there are beautiful new buildings and new pieces of art throughout the city that are just waiting for portals missions and um, it's just amazing every time I go down there there's um, a new building that's up um, a new park that has been restored and it's just uh, really nice to see uh, all of that coming coming about after all these years so that's very cool I'm glad to hear that yeah. Uh, and, and portal submissions are coming very, very soon. I always Yay! slipped and gave you the date, but <laughs> I, <wait. laughs> I won't tell. I won't tell. Can you <laughs> slip? <laughs> maybe, maybe by the time this airs, I don't, I don't know when I'm going to put this out, but um, yeah, very, very, very soon, very soon. So no, we're we're all very excited to have them come back. So yeah. and then I there think are plans and road trips in the works. So. Ooh, awesome, awesome. Oh, there you go. I should come to New Zealand to help submit portals. That would be, that's, there you go. right? That's a very good angle. We've got some really track. good ones. Yeah, yeah. I think mm. I'll see if I can't wrangle that one. So how was, how was the mission day in Christchurch? Uh, that was the best one that I've attended. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Had a fabulous weekend, came home completely exhausted, and yeah, it was really good. What, uh, anything particular about it made, that made it so, so good? Um, it was a little bit of everything, but um, uh, partly it was spring, and they, they built the, um, some of the missions around that theme. And um, number seven was my favorite, daffodils. It was beautiful. And uh, took you right through massive fields of daffodils uh, in bloom, and it was beautiful. They did a, a really nice route that allowed you to do um, six or seven at a time and then you could stop at a nexus and have a coffee or lunch or morning tea and then you could do do the rest and the final leg took you out to an after party um, at a, a new restaurant that had just opened so uh, it was, yeah it was quite nice and it was cool swag and good people and um, just a really good time yeah sounds like it was well organized yeah definitely was who, who were the organizers? You want to give them a little shout out? Yeah. Sure. Uh, for the resistance, we had Red Iguana and Dark Silver Angel, both Christchurch agents. And then for the Enlightened, we had um, Skinnergy, McBron, Finito, and Crowbar NZ. So, Fortitude. And they did a great job. Awesome. Some very familiar names. We don't have to get <laughs> Yeah. doesn't deserve any more credit he's he's yeah it's okay i'll, I'll edit that. I'll edit his name out no, now he'll be listening for it <laughs> he's got to get the black mention badge because i think he's got yes else. yes and you have to say black you're not allowed to say on it you know somebody asked me that question on, on i saw Monday. that and i don't i don't know why i use both and there's no rhyme or reason to it it's it's Onyx. What do you say? Do you say black? Do you say Onyx? Um, I always said Onyx because I thought it sounded cool, but I believe that there is something written maybe on NIA Ops or something that talks about the badge levels, and the badge levels say black. Uh, well, speaking of metal, is there any type of metal that is like the hardest that you had to, to earn? Like, what, what's the hardest metal in your opinion? Um, well, Guardian, I think, is the hardest for most. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's like a, that's a can of worms, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, the other one was probably, um, well, the one that means the most would probably be Illuminator, just because we have, mm. um, it, it's quite a different um, playing style, living on an island, basically, and you're kind of limited for the points you can use. And um, so it was uh, a lot of teamwork to get it. And um, I still pretty much got black and that was it. The, the move had to go to somebody else at that point. So oh, Very, very cool. Mm. So how much, how much moo do you have right now? Uh, just over 4 million. <laughs> Literally, I got the badge and that was it. Um, Win the club. That's all I got too, I think. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it just it seems fair that once you've got it, that um, you help somebody else get it after yeah. that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We do a lot of things with the islands north, so Norfolk, New Caledonia, and Rarotonga. Um, so if we've got people traveling, we try and do fun ops 
while they're there and um, make it make it worth um, going in addition to having a really nice um, beach holiday you've got uh, you know cool lines you can do from a lot of those places yeah definitely I, I see a lot thrown from uh, New Caledonia um, yes <laughs> yeah and they've got little islands off of the main islands and yeah, so it makes for quite a um, dynamic playing board really. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You guys are, you're in a really strategic spot because you th can go West and support Australia. You can go North and support sort of the, the Japanese, Asian, Vietnamese area, Malaysia, Indonesia, and all that. You obviously have Antarctica to your South, um, which I've seen, fields and links coming off and going to that and then yeah how far to the east can you guys throw can um we can hit certain spots in um hawaii but we can't hit the states otherwise so we're we're very limited on the east yeah still that's i mean that's a lot of different options to do a lot of big things oh yeah definitely yeah yeah we um it's mainly australia and the islands to the north that we that we tend to, to work with, but um, and there's lots of little islands in between that we do things with. But the Antarctic fields are still kind of the, um, the creme de la creme. I, I guess people love having those keys and um, either as vanity keys or in the hopes of one day throwing a field to Antarctica. Um, yeah, so yeah. it's very something that very few agents have actually done. I have no hope of ever throwing a field to Antarctica, but I definitely have two antarctic keys so <laughs> oh well if you come to new zealand i'm sure that we could um organize something oh, but see now everybody knows so they're gonna see red <laughs> yeah they, they just don't know when you're coming so we would do that first okay, I'll, I'll, I'll step the scanner i'll be i'll go dark and then uh <laughs> no social posts no nothing i'm just gonna disappear nope. and then all of a sudden there's gonna be a field to antarctica exactly exactly perfect so you've been playing for a while right when when did you start playing um, I started playing in January of 2015, so that was our summer. Okay, okay. And how did you get into the game? Uh, <laughs> it was a bunch of my old, um, my I say my mummy friends. So there was, I think, a group of five out of out of that group that um, were playing Ingress and had been playing it for a while, and they kept trying to convince me to to play, and I. I just, just, I don't have time for that. And um, it was summer and we were just kind of in that, that lull, that summer lull. We didn't know what to do and needed to get out of the house. So we um, started, I think, with just two of the kids initially and we went out and played for a day and then they came home raving about this game. And so the other two signed up and we went out and um, the five of us is level ones, twos and threes sort of tech portals and we couldn't get the portals down, of course, so we would each stand on resonators. And um, so we were quite the sight to see, really. Um, we did have draw many looks about what we were doing and yelling across the portal to <laughs> try and synchronize our attacks. And yeah, it was, it was quite hilarious. A lot of fun, good memories. But yeah. So who in the household was the first to level eight? Me. Uh, me. And is yeah. everybody level 16? Or... No, 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 no. Um, it's funny to hear you say that it was your your mommy group and you kind of poo pooed them like you didn't have time for it. And now look at <laughs> <it. laughs> now, Yeah, I yeah. Amazing how surprised. you make time for things that you find um, important. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. and I've definitely outlasted, I think I've outlasted all of them. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, good for you. Uh, you know, if, as long as you're deriving fun from it, then keep on keeping on, I guess. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. No, it is. And the people are what um, the game is, is really about, being able to get out and um, enjoy the different facets the game offers. And, um, yeah, it just ticks a lot of the boxes for me. Mm -hmm. So what is on your Ingress bucket list to do that you haven't done? The Ingress bucket list? Oh. Is there a city you haven't been to? Is there some sort of like accomplishment you haven't done yet? Um, I would like to have um, really nice badges, but again, I don't have time to do everything. Um, my bucket list is probably coming to San Fran for 
the anomaly in December. Um, I haven't been back for about 10 years stateside. So um, yeah, that was, it was kind of the decision with it being a five year anniversary and Niantic being there and it just made a lot of sense to go and, and meet a lot of people that I haven't met in English yet. So the last one after that will then be the UK, but that will, fingers crossed, be next year sometime. So. Very cool. How long are you going to be here in the States when you come for Uh, About 10 days. Okay. All right. So make a little yeah. bit out of it. Yeah. If you're going to spend the money to go, you might as well yeah. rent a car and see some sites possibly and get some uniques. <laughs> don't don't do what thing. I do when I went to Australia. I think I landed on a Thursday and flew out on Sunday. So yeah, yeah. I think Hank did that on the last on the trip to Brisbane, and he was a bit of a zombie. I think poor guy. Yeah. So yeah. Although he's a bit of a zombie, just it. You know, <laughs> he's that simulacrum <laughs> coming back to life thing going on. Yes, that's true. That's true. Very true. Very true. Um. Well, let's see. So what has been, I get, what kind of player do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself a, an ops person? Do you like fielding? Like what's, what's your bread and butter? Um, probably ops and intel. That's, um, that's really where the game really took hold. Um, that, and as I said before, the community, we used to run, um, because I didn't have a regular, you know, eight to five job, um, and I've got a van, I would, I have two stops in town and I would pick up one group of people and pick up the second group of people and we go do a drive farm at lunch and then I'll take them back to their work. And, um, we used to do that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, ops. And then I moved into doing Intel and just expanded to anomalies from there. So I've kind of done a little bit of everything, but, um, my, my very favorite are probably still ops and anomalies. I just enjoy working with people to um, do something that you can't necessarily do on your own, that you have to involve other people in planning and um, just makes it that much more enjoyable. So beyond anomalies, what is the longest ingress operation that you've participated in? Longest operation? Um, Probably, uh, we had one that we planned down to Antarctica, and um, that was around Easter last year, so um, I think there are about 70 people involved, um, fields from Australia and some islands, um, an island just off the southwest coast of Australia, and it was the first time that we covered all of New Zealand without an internal anchor. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was, that was a big first. That was probably, um, the biggest accomplishment at the time. So that, that took, um, quite a bit of organizing and, um, just lots of people in different places and key movements and, um, yeah. That sounds cool. Sounds big. Sounds, <laughs> I bet you there's a sense of relief. How did you celebrate when, when you finally put the field up? Um, bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we had a few a few issues getting everything up that we wanted to, but um, yeah, definitely wine. Had an extra person hanging out um, at the time, and yeah, just cracked the bottle and enjoyed that we got the field up, and um, yeah, so that was quite exciting. So do you remember what kind of wine it was? That's the important question. It was a Pinot Gris. I couldn't tell you the brand, but it was a Pinot Gris. There you go. Hey, you know what? That's, you <laughs> remember the kind. That's, that's half the battle. Yep, so. that's good. <laughs> yeah, definitely and um yeah it's definitely the biggest part for me is the people and and doing what i can to help other people reach their goals in the game and like you said there really are so many different facets when people talk about um you know there being a field up and they can't play the game and I'm like well there's lots of different ways to play the game let's think of a different way you can play the game then. um just because there's so much that it offers between um, decoding and intel and anomalies there's there's always something for that can be done um, if if people want to to look at something other than just what you can do in the scanner um, you know that the scanner is to me is kind of a the, the doorway to a much larger world you know I, I think that's you you enrich the game and in yourself by getting to know these people 
um, and what they have to offer because everybody has something to offer and it's different for everybody as well. So. Well said, well said. Mm. You guys seem to have a pretty decent um, cross-faction relationship over there. Is what, What's the key to that success? How, how, how does that come about? Um, I think, I think with anything, it can, that can wax and wane. Um, I think, um, it, it varies on the people. You know, I think both factions have really amazing people and both factions have less than amazing people, maybe. Um, and I, I think it just matters who you connect with and, and, um, if you're spending your time trying to deal with uh, the negative side of things, then I don't think you're going to have a very good experience with cross faction. So I'm going to come back around to the beginning of our conversation when you introduced yourself. Um, okay. Your name, your agent name, Van Jeffries. What what is the meaning <laughs> behind that? <laughs> most most people think it's because I drive a black van and my name is Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> um, that's actually a combination of of. Um, my maiden and my married names. So when we got married, I was working as an engineer and needed to keep my maiden name. So um, I was going to hyphenate and my husband said, are you crazy? And um, so just as kind of a joke, we started combining the last names and yeah, that's where it came from. So I'm a Jeffrey and yeah. the other half is, is part of the van. So nice. yeah. What is something that we wouldn't expect about you? Do you have like <laughs> weird hobby where you collect, um, I don't know, stuffed cats or something along those lines? <laughs> um, I, I, I do collect hearts. I do, hearts. I do collect hearts. That makes, um, you know what, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, that was something my mother used to collect. And, um, after she passed, I started collecting it as well. So it just kind of became a way for her to be part of the, the different things in my life. So, yeah, so I buy hearts lots of places um, just for that reason. Yeah. But it's probably mostly the cake making that gets people. So um, uh, it's kind of my litmus test. You, uh, Yeah, I'm a fan of cake. So <laughs> I, I didn't like cake for a very long time time while doing cakes how can you so, not play cake well, when you eat cake all the time i suppose i mean i suppose no that's fair that's fair enough no, no. i don't know i don't know for me personally if there's such a thing as too much cake but i'm i'm sure <laughs> i can tell you for a fact there is such a thing there, as too much cake. Is, that's that's yeah. dangerous to hear I, I don't know how much cake that is but i hope <laughs> never get to that point so how much of your wardrobe is uh is blue now that you play ingress Oh, lots of things are blue. Yeah, I've, I've probably got at least 10 hoodies and some shirts and I've customized some shoes and um, oh, yeah, lots. It Pretty much everything I, I, I buy will tend to be blue. Blue power cords, blue, yeah, anything blue I can, can get. Yeah. So. I have to say, it's pretty amazing how much Ingress changes people's wardrobes. There's teal is still my favorite, I have to say. Teal is still my favorite color. But anytime I wear teal, I get told, asked why I'm wearing green. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, mm. I can imagine. I personally just wear Niantic t-shirts now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've noticed in the photos, especially the Europe ones, I think you had a red one on pretty much every photo. Yep. <laughs> And it's my uniform. I went from wearing suits and ties to ingress t-shirts. So, <laughs> I think t-shirts are, are far, far more comfortable to work in. Oh, so. totally. So much. <laughs> How about I give you the opportunity to ask me one question? Let me flip the script. I don't know. I, did a I mean, I can't ask you about your lasagna recipe, right? No, no. So. No, no you can't ask that. You can't ask that. It's, it's my mom's lasagna recipe. That's <laughs> exactly. What's her number again? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, we just, had um, it, we just had it the other day, in fact. No, I saw that too. And then I really wanted lasagna. So <laughs> that was, yeah, and I still haven't had it. So um, uh, what is your favorite part of being the global community manager? That is a great question. I'm glad you asked that. And the simple answer is this. It's interacting with people. Um, 
Yeah, in, in so many ways, from the relationships to just meeting folks to people watching. I'm a huge poker player. I've been playing poker since I was like 13. So the human psyche is fascinating to me and there's no lack of uh, things to study and watch and observe in the Ingress universe. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I understand how vested people can be in Ingress because I was there, I am there. And I just, I love the fact that every single day I get to interact with players and get to advocate on their behalf and try to make the game better, which in turn really makes the world better. As corny as that sounds, I mean, you've got people who are having babies, people who are getting married, you know, people who are bonding with their kids, with their parents, you know, all because of this thing that we label as a game. And being able to be part of that is just, it's really, it's really friggin' cool. I have one of the coolest jobs in the world. So, you know, although it is going on 2 a.m. my time, but regardless <laughs> of the hours that I keep, um, yes. I just, I love, I love the interactions with, with people. So that's, uh, that's definitely by far my, my favorite thing. Yeah, without a doubt. Good. So. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree. You've been really good for the game um, and, and the players in the game. So I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Ms. Van, Time to bed. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and chatting and sure. Staying up till like what five thirty your time. <laughs> yeah, five forty. I I stayed up so I, late. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I appreciate you sacrificing for me. That's great. Well, thank you very yeah. much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for having me, Andrew. <laughs> Night. level has recently increased. Excellent. <laughs>